Hi, so this is Sierra West. This is going to be mode two. It's called Boats and Banjos. I've set the whole game up so far. We've got the mountain cards. We have the canoe paddle to set up again for a two player game. This is the solo playthrough for mode two. We've got the three canoe paddles in row two. We have the two canoe, uh, canoe paddles in row four. Well, actually, it's a uh, a kayak, uh, was it kind of canoe kayak? So um, I should know the difference as it used to be a kayak constructor, but I think it's a canoe because it's most likely open. Orientated it so you can kind of see the word Sierra West to the sides and um, the relevant pieces are out. The bag that had uh, the pieces for a two player setup has been included. We have a finite resource, unlike apples, we have um, only six trout, uh, I think you call them salmon and uh, bass that you have in here. So 18 in total in a two-player game or in the solo game as we're playing today. We have a die that could occur for when um, the uh, solo player is playing against the automata. So when we're playing against Hastings, depending on what he rolls, he's going to get something here. And remember, whatever they take, that's something else I can't get. So some of these cards might have them as a wild, so you can spend two white fish whatever white really represents, to be moving up on the grey track. So everything should be in shot, you can kind of see what moves up. Based on the comments from the other playthrough, I'm hoping to not make the same kind of mistakes. The crucial thing that occurred was once I happened to not pay a resource, it seemed, and also um, the cabin ability. So the cabin ability that I used and are slightly different, one of which being that you can do one for two, but according to... Somebody can't do two for four, or they have heard mixed things about that. For Hastings, he's going to be getting three cards, just like in the Apple one. But this time round, um, if he has the mule, he'll activate all four things. So now I'm just going to set up Hastings. I've deliberately set up the board the way I have. So you won't necessarily see um, the cabins on the bottom, especially as things start filling up. So there's a little extra bit added onto the side. We have these canoes, these kayaks that can go along. And basically, we might be wanting to paddling along, like with our wagons, but this time trying to grab some extra resources. And just like to say thank you to obviously all the new subscribers as well, all the existing ones and everyone who's watching. Um, there'll be fewer unboxing videos, but now and again, it's like, oh, okay, so you've just uh, unpackaged that. Be good to see a summer game coming along. We have the standard tiles are down here too. So that's what Hastings will be dealing with. And there should be a fourth one, but I can't spot that at the minute. And finally, we have, oh, here it is, it's over here. So the standard stuff here, and it needs a beaver. And we also have the raccoon because we're playing boats and banjos. So boats and banjos, you'll see as I'm going along, there might be some certain things, and basically, like the bear, we might have to stop and start playing a banjo back. So if you've seen the film Deliverance, um, which came out in 1972, you'll kind of get the theme there, which is um, very cool. This is going to go back in this bag because this is basically how I set up the two player game for Boats and Banjos. Everybody gets a card each as well. So that goes in there and um, we're pretty much ready to begin. So all the relevant different cabins have come up. So I've shuffled that and we always start, hence the first player marker being over there. So I give my pack a shuffle. We've seen what Hastings has done. He's going to try and trap the uh, rightmost animal. So let's just get our three cards and see what we have. So now I'm taking a seat and hopefully I'll be bashing the camera. And you'll kind of see what I'm looking to do. So we have this down here. We could be going up here, try and get some boat moves. So I'll definitely get some boots moving. I think the rest of it's fine. Um, he could be getting a beaver regardless. I think let's go for this. I think in this kind of layout, it doesn't matter too much, the kind of things we go for. So here we go. Could dig early on and get a cabin. And there's nothing for me to try. There's a bear I could get. I need a resource. I've got no resources. So I'm just gonna start moving everyone across. So we have one boat movement. One goes up the track, gets a stone. Goes, it gets two, one, two, a booty up to here. Get some meat. He's gonna go up now. He gets two meat. We're gonna dig, nothing to dig other than here. Let's grab that one for free. Move across, oh, need to spend a resource. And we forgot again, uh, get two bits of wood. 
I don't think I want to bother digging this time. These will move along. For two resources, I don't know if it's worth it. That'll be my off action anyway. So I'll be doing that when uh, Hastings is moving and he's gonna move the wagon probably. Um, I'm going to probably start moving up. I've got the right stuff to do that. I need one more thing here. I could spend it and get an extra resource. Get a, but this is quite nice. I'm actually gonna spend it and get extra boat mo uh, boot movements because later on in the game, that later on, no mind, I've done it. Spent those two things and go up. He's gonna go up here and go up on the, the mule will be good later on. Let's just do this one. Two of them, one of them, brown. Get my double boots. Hastings turn. So Hastings is going to be trapping my beaver. Now um, it's going to be moving the wagon. One position uh, is going to be doing the special card. So this is where we look into this one here. And we're going to be rolling a die and seeing what happens. And uh, let's see what comes about. Um, we always do it top to bottom. So we're going to roll it and a five. A five is a white one. So he's now got that there. Of course, that's just uh, stopping me from doing stuff. Um, finally, uh, he's going to move to the top of the top of here. It doesn't really matter which way around you have these guys. But basically, one's going up on the left, one's going up on the right. Goes to the top, and that ends his stuff. And then I'm going to trap his bear on my off turn. So um, I'll finish doing my stuff, and then, yeah, he's going to trap the bear. And I've suddenly got a bear in play. Cool. Now it goes all the way back, so that stays there. This comes back. These go out. Go again. Now he might want to be going right again. He's got free rein. Skinning early on, not that bothered with. Get the mule sounds like a good idea. Moving up once and then digging. I think that looks work good to me. So we go across one, I go up one. Of the two, I'd rather the wagon, to be honest. Ah, sorry, he should have been on this side because he was going on the right-hand side. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to go there. I'm then gonna go across one, meet, get the mule. Don't need to do any more boots yet. Um, the question is, do I bring him down here? I think I do, and get him a double boot. Oh, I don't need to do a double boot movement. Never mind. And then, yeah, he's just gonna come out here. And he's going to get myself two of them. Spend a resource. And get the card. And I'm gonna stick him Goal planning. So goal planning is uh, worth doing, which is it matches this symbol here. And let's me basically get these resources. So those are now going to be kind of like plonked out. I'm kind of showing you what I'm digging up. I'm digging up clay or stone or rock, whatever you want to call it. Or am I digging up gold? I'm going to stick him further up the mountain. That's like a good idea. So yeah, panning. Let's hope to pan next time. Let's reveal this card. Ooh. So the game ends again when all those six cards come out. Unfortunately, trimming the nails yesterday wasn't a good idea when you're dealing with cards. That card is now there. So, um, I'm now going to go across, get to two of them, go up again. Um, I'm actually going to just use that to move them across one and spend a resource. Um, yep. Yeah. And then go across again and get that one there. The alternative is I could go up one and up two. No, leave it as that. Um, I think I've got that. I'm gonna go across, I'm not digging. 
that should be across again. Um, and this time I'm just going to spend these two to get up on here. The alternative is to go higher on the brown and get a bigger multiplier, which I think I'd rather do. But I needed wood, which I did have. I can't remember what I chucked away now. Probably it would be one of them. Let's take one of them back. Spend that. And then I'll get this one instead. Put that away and get them. I want to race and get there. This should have come down. And the next one flips. Now the other modes, two, uh, three and four, are very interesting how this works. But for now, um, I'm done. I've done my single action. I had nothing else remaining to do the other one. I've chosen not to go and grab that card quite cheaply, which I should have really picked up on. But I've no, done it now. So now um, they're going away. Also knowing that he's not digging on the next round, these three cards go away. Now I'm worried I made a mistake again, but that is what comments are for. And the watch replaying itself back is also for. So what is Hastings doing? Wagon again, that's what I want. And he's gonna be wagoning a lot. Okay, um, now he's gonna be moving from the red track. Do I wanna track that? I do. I'll track that to get a meet. I also want to be, I can't trap the bear, I've already got one. Um, go up that one and it goes to the top and on the right hand side, he's already there. And I still want to double check when he's at the top if he's already there. Um, hmm, staying there, Never mind. cheap round. So he's stuck there. Seems like it's going very well for me. My turn again, three more cards. We know what one of them is. Question is, do I really want to be skinning? Oh, I do like this card. I just need to get enough gold somehow. Ooh, I want to be getting some gold panning. So gold panning, um, you take the leftmost resource from each river card along your trail. If no resources left in the card, you simply skip it. Well, that would be nice to get the leftmost in this case. But I do want some, I really want some gold. And I really want some gold here as well. Um, oh, this is going to be a nuisance. So I've already got the mule. I don't care about the mule. Ugh. I think we stick that there. The gold pan. Yep, yeah, and we cover over that. Makes a lot of sense. And we don't have to worry about the other trapping. Good. So where were we? Now this time I could use my boots down the bottom, and using this. Uh, Boot symbol allows me to move up quicker up the mountain, which saves me having to use up these guys. So let's begin. Moves one and goes, maybe I'll just spend the resources, because this looks really good. I'm gonna spend two resources to go there. Get a resource back. Gold pan, take the leftmost resource on each card up to the wagon position. Go across all the way to the end. Now it's this guy's turn. And I want to be, I really want to get some more this. It's the trouble. I want to dig up the stuff, but also want the clay for other stuff. Because the wagon is getting very pricey now. And these are really good cards. I really do like this card a lot. Um, so that one can move me up on that track. Although one, two, three. Um, yeah. Could have moved up twice instead. Right. I'm going to choose to... Ooh. Skip that one. Oh, actually, I can get gold here anyway. I am going to just go this way. One, skip it and do that. Get this skinning action, gain myself a gold, and then go up top. But I've got to pay to get past it. Ah, annoying. I've got the mule, doesn't matter. So I'm going to go up here, spend two of those to go up the wagon. I'm then going to take my mule and go up here and spend three. And now it goes up again. Excellent. That comes off. Didn't use this guy. 
mule comes back. Um, he is trapping again. He's got the bear. So he's gained six points. I've only got three off my minus. I've got two of my cabin spaces covered, which was good. Stick that there. His turn. He moves again on the wagon as we anticipated. He rolls a die. Two. He grabs pink salmon, I guess. Um, he doesn't move the wagon again, thankfully. And he digs. He digs this card and comes back. Yeah, wrong finger again. Right, he's got that card. He's got some points for cards, stopping me getting points. This card comes here. This card comes off. And now there's further positions along the wagon to consider getting. Move the first player marker out of the way. Some cards further down. Okay. What cards do I have? One, and then shuffle these. Hmm, I want to pan again, I think. Panning is good. The fish hook could be worth, worthwhile in a moment. So, fish hook is basically going to fish. You gain all the fish shown on the river cards, um, including the one obviously the canoe's on. So my canoe hasn't moved along yet, which is the trouble. I haven't had any paddling cards come up, which is basically here. You can move one or two based on the number of things, or rapid. The thing is you can only move one position, one or two. So unless I do it, I'm not going to touch it too much. Um, but basically you can't necessarily sell stuff unless you get back to the start to where the fish market is. Um, but yeah, like I said, fish are limited and you need to be aware of that. So I'm now going to think about using my bear, which I don't like again. And I'm not worrying about the fish too much. So basically trying to get sets for those uh, fish. So here we go. I'm now going to go block off in my cabin, get two boat movement, two boot movements even. Um, one, two, I'm going to try and rush it against um, the enemy. Ah, I can get right to the top quite cheaply here. So I go here for one. And now I'll grab the leftmost resource on the cards. So this one does need filling up. One, two, one. And we know I'm taking the leftmost one here. Leftmost one leftmost one. Unfortunately it hasn't come up very well for me here. And then move across. We've done the gold panning. Move up two. One, two. Take a gold. Good. We can move up the wagon again. Um, I then think he can just basically come off. He can go up. Get two. He does want to dig, definitely. I think he's got tons of everything. Uh, wood is... I don't need as much wood. Let's just spend one of these. Dig this up. This is where a green card would be quite nice. Actually get some more wood. But for now, I want the card. Paddling. I don't know if I really want to be paddling right now. I haven't got the right kind of stuff. Um, so I'm going to put it in my discard. Always face up. And then chuck these two cards over. And get all those other nice wagony cards later. Um, I skin. I just gain a single... Um, single bit of gold here. Can't skin this one, it's the next card I'll be getting. Then moving across, I'm not moving him across, got two actions to use. I'm going to use him to go one, two, and wood to basically go up here again and gain a gold. And then the mule is going to send this guy up too, which gives me an another wagon position. Good. Now, I'm done. Didn't use him. He comes back. Get rid of the three cards. Hastings goes. He takes the rightmost thing. This is why I didn't double check what I had. It was a bear. He's got the bear. What's he going to do now? He is going to be... He's not digging. He's moving to the top. He's moving top on the round side. Which would be... One, two, three, four, five. This card here. Then he um, is going to move up on the brown track. Gives me a piece of wood because I'm going to track that, um, which is fine. And then, oh, yeah, then he digs. He digs here. And as he's on the top card, he'll get it. Revealing this card, which helps me going along the wagon trail. 
you can see, wagon, canoe. And it's called a canoe, just to double check on the rule book. Right. So, what have we got left here? That stays covered. This comes out, and we've got that very occasion of me there. Three cards. One, two, three. Getting a good multiply on the cabins. Bear. Stick that there again. Um, yeah. I want to start doing some cabining stuff. Lots of movement. Let's get this cabin place my tampon worker again. So he's going to go across one and he's going to move his booty up two positions again because of what he's got. Uh, one, two. He doesn't need the mule though. Oh, never mind. Keep going. Go to the top. This time let's take. I don't really want any of these. More gold panning. Don't like that banjo though. As you'll see, the banjo might kick in. I'll show you in a minute. He comes up and he gains two. I go across, I'll dig, so I'll spend a piece of gravel. This comes off. I've now got this card, which is very interesting because if I want to move past here, I need to get here first to move them across. So it's just like having the bear, it's a red um, border. Now, when I think of red border, I always think of square border. But anyway, I need to get around that. And then otherwise, so we have one guy across here. One guy's going to crow across here, and then he can move on. You'll see me do that in a moment in the next round. Next card comes out. This time, we've got this canoe. So the game is nearly at a close. This uh, final card is going to come out here. Things are getting cheap. And then I'm also going to be able to try and monopolize on this. Two more pieces of wood. Loads of resources. And I'm going to dig. Do I dig? Do I jump up the top and grab an extra card? Is there anything I want there? There isn't. Three minus points here. I've got, I don't know how many um, cards now which are special. One. Two, three. So the next card is going to give me four points compared to three for a cabin, although I could use the ability of the cabin. I think I'm just going to I need to spend a point to gain a point, but the next card's worth five. It's also worth nothing, and I don't need much in the way of resources. That is going to fulfill me for one thing. That's going to fulfill me for another thing. So I'm going to spend this oh, and then one, two, three, and then that would be a bit of a shame because I can't then do all of it. I've got the mule, so I could convert something. Um, do I do it? So that's one. That would be that one. This one would be that one. And that one isn't the right stuff, but I could convert that to be the right thing. And I've got one spare. What I'm going to do is do this guy up here first. No, I'll do, this guy is going to go here, spending two and one of these to move me up on the grey track, which gives me a gold. Now he's spent, that's happened. Now I'm going to send this guy. Um, the question is, I still have enough resources to do it. I've got enough there, I've got enough to pay to feed that one. So I am going to dig. I'm going to send, it doesn't matter too much, send these two things as resources to spend, to dig again, by spending that just to chuck my dude onto, let's say this card, it's going to come back by doing the digging action which I've spent to do, chucking rid of the card, and then finally I'm going to bring him up to go here and spend the two wood and the stone to move up on the brown track to give me boots back. Then I'm going to use the mule to convert these two resources into a stone and the meat, spending the stone and the meat and the wood to send the mule here and moving up another track. This time I'm going to get zero points for going anywhere on the red. So four points are better than, or three points are better than nothing. The alternative is to go up here instead. I'm going to bring this guy up. 
And I don't know if I need it yet because I don't need the mule. I'm going to hope I get it later on. I'm going to move up this track, giving me an extra pair of boots, which this moment in time I shouldn't need. Okay, done. This all comes off. The trouble is I've got no resources should he have anything for me to trap. We now know he's got nothing to trap. So the rightmost resource I think I had was this one, which is the beaver, which he's already got. So it's the leftmost card actually, but that's not his turn. Okay, world card. So he's gonna roll for more fish. He's gonna get another, I think it was a white one, wasn't it? Yeah, no, yeah, it's a pink. Now he's gonna trap. Um, he needs to see what I've got. I think it was the beaver, so he kind of got that. Um, oh no, he's he's not trapping. There's nothing for him to trap. And then we've got the wagon. He moves to the top on the leftmost card, which is going to be up here. And that's it. He's finished. The next day, it's this card going here. I've got three cards. We've got the banjo, which I do want to do because all of this stuff's going to come out. This might be the penultimate round. Of course, any mistakes, it's, you know, I've got no audience other than uh, hearing back once this is uploaded. Let's chuck. So the banjo, I really just don't need the banjo. And I do want my stone. I don't need too much of the leg movement either because of my cabin. So all I come back, I have nobody to grab. I'm gonna send him back here. Send the tan guy onto the boots and start moving on again. I'll be moving on twice, which isn't enough for me to be digging. I get double movement with that guy, get a stone, I get to pan, I get everything leftmost, which is getting some good stuff now. Yeah, that was a good round, four out of five. I move up again to the top. Again, I don't really care about the paddles. I go for the meat. I can consider going up, I don't need to yet. I've got enough stone to get then my wagon up to the last position. Bring this dude out. Tan path now gives me two bits of meat. I will then dig. I'll spend a food to get this card. I don't want the paddles at the minute. As I'm not planning to spend the fish. It's my strategy based on what's come out. I get two of these. I go across. Do I dig? This is where this card does come up. And I, yeah, I, I don't know if I need that card compared to anything else. I will dig because it's still got some good stuff. Well, having said that, I need three here. I need some, the red one. One, two, I'll use the mule to basically go there. And then I could go up on brown. I mean, for one to get more points, that's good. <laughs> So, yeah, and let's just spend the two gold using the mule to send him up uh, up on the tracks. And he's going to just grab this card here. And then he's going to chuck that away because I don't want that card either. Okay, this reveals this card. So if Hastings can get this card taken, that is going to trickle um, one more round. So now these guys all come up. So let's just do them all. This gives me, uh, keeps the mule and gives me, that's gonna be a, a gravel basically up on the red track, keeping the mule. This spends three to move me up on the wagon, multiplying my multiplies the marks. Spend my gold into being a piece of meat and sends me up on the brown track, sending me this as well. So everything has just been placed out. So what does Hastings do? The beaver is there again, he does trap, but He's got the beaver, so that was uh, good. 
Is he digging? He isn't. Doesn't look like it. He goes up. He moves up on the red track. Damn, he's got this guy. So he's going to use every ability, which thankfully, based on where he's at, it's going to trigger. He goes up on this track. Um, I am going to trap that using one of my characters and get myself a piece of gold. And then he does move to the top. So maybe he'll get it in the next round. He moves to the top, which is over here. And that is going to be top rightmost card. I'd say it's there. That ends Hastings' turn. And I can now trap a fox. If I trap a fox, I can't use this ability, but I'm going to do it because it's going to give me three points. I don't think I need to be moving up my boots much now. So two cards and then a shuffle. So we'll have one round and then one more round if I can dislodge him. Don't care about the banjo. But the mule be nice to not give him the extra stuff. Um, in fact, I think I'll show you the banjo because I don't need to be doing it otherwise. It's going to cost me as well. I do want the mule. I don't care about getting a gold. Gold and a stone. Quite nice. Let me just show you what you would do if that card was there. So you would have to send him out to there, then he can't move any further until he goes here, paying a resource, and then he can move on. Basically, that's how that card would work. But for me, I don't need to be doing that. I wouldn't mind getting all of this and grabbing one, two, three, Pete, that's three points there. You don't need much in the way there. I need that mule though. Okay, so digging is gonna definitely happen. I can get some minus points on these cabins though and stuff. So um, I'm now moving across one only position now. One. Going across there. Panning. One, two, three, four, five. Don't need to be moving up there. Um, just leave him there for a second. He comes up. I get two of these. I dig, and I dig, and I dig, and I dig. Uh, he's definitely going to be getting one of those, that thing, so it's going to trigger the next round. I dig, I spend, what do I need here? Two, one, one, random, and a random. So I just spend a piece of clay to grab uh, this card. I uh, don't, mm, I'll keep that card. And then skin to get the clay back. And gold as per this. He doesn't go up any higher. He goes here. Oh, hang on, he can move again. One, basically it's there. Get another gold. Um, spend all those resources, so I need two meat and a wood to go up on red. Ooh, getting the mule. I didn't have a mule before. So that would be this guy. And he goes here and converts the mule to spend a stone. That'd be a representing a wood, and that represents a meat. To up on any track I like. I'm only max on these. Um, let's get an extra gold, because I've already got the mule. Done. Hastings is round. Now, where is he trapping? He's not trapping. This goes away. Let's see how my score goes, again, not getting any fish. Are fish important? Let's find out. Oh, what's going on here? That's my card. Maybe I didn't use it. Ah. Right. I shouldn't have trimmed these nails before doing this. So, triggering the end, digs up the card. He's now got three. This will trigger the final round. I now get the benefit of this card if it comes up. I'm not going to populate it because I might not need to. I think these cards will come out, so that won't be there because they're underneath. But that does flip. So I know that's underlapping, but it's fine. Um, that's up and he goes to the top. He's already, that would flip too. Oh, I don't know, he was just there. I think he comes back, but that would flip. I think that goes there. Maybe made a mistake, but I think it's the last round. I think there's much more happening. Digs again. He's got nothing to dig, but he does take the tile. He takes the leftmost tile. We chuck out a new thing, but it's pretty much the last round, and he's going to grab this. It's an extra three more points. 
Um, I've got nothing to do. I could trap the beaver, which I will do. And I'll spend my clay to trap the beaver. That's uh, reduced my uh, negative points by three. So I've got three extra points. And that is his penultimate round done. Now it's my final round, three cards. Let's see what I can do. Paddling, I haven't paddled once at all. Uh, guaranteed to paddle regardless of what I do now. Digging, I think I just want to be digging a lot now, I think. So chuck that in there. Chucking that there. I think I got quite well or lucky with the wagon. This game actually has a lot of wagons in it, it seems. So maybe that's a different way of balancing it. So, do I go down the bottom? I don't need to. I did trap though, so yeah, I couldn't have done both. I I go along the bottom, I think, initially. I get two pieces of clay. I dig. I spend a piece of clay. I get the card. Doesn't matter where it goes now, I'll stick it here. Um, I get two pieces of wood. Move the top guy along one. He goes here. I then dig it up, spending... Hmm, Two pieces of wood. Getting that card. Oh. He moves across one, gets some meat. Paddle. Now, let's see how paddling works. This is rapid paddling. So it allows you to move to any river card or the fish market. Um, so at the end of the game, you need to be getting back here basically to be doing stuff. Um, but yeah, if you want to have your canoe along somewhere along here and then you have the hook symbol, lets you gather all the fish up to that space. It's not going to happen this game. That's just how it's been. But my aim is to play a playthrough if anyone's interested. And therefore you can kind of see how it interacts. If I was over here and I had a hook, I'd get those three things from the general supply if they are available. So grab a paddle there. Just go all the way along here. Why not? But I need to get back if I want to try and sell the stuff. So you're going out and venturing and coming back. The further you go out, the more you're going to get. It takes you longer to get back unless you have the rapid paddle action. Movement of one. Now, this isn't good because I'm only going to be here now. Um, it doesn't matter because the final round, I can't do any more panning. And I'm already maxed along here. Done. Now what I'm going to do, I'm moving up. So I'm going to move up here and here. Um, I've got the, the mule. Um, I feel like I've moved the wrong thing. Maybe not. That's no, fine. Uh, so I'm now going to be uh, spending this, this and this. To move up on grey. Grey is this one here. Give me my nice multiplier and one of them. I'm going to spend my mule to chuck in three of these to move up on the brown. Oh no, I don't. I'm already maxed on brown. So there you go. Don't rush too much on one track um, because I could have gone up a different track as I did earlier on. So Hastings is final turn. So what's he going to do? He is going to be not tracking. He's got a beaver that I've already got. He is going to be shoveling away. He can't shovel away. He's moving to the mountain. Oh, he does shovel away. He grabs the leftmost one of these, which is, doesn't make any difference because it would basically be on the board, but he just takes that. Three extra points. He then moves up on this track here. I get a resource. Doesn't matter. It's the last round. And uh, finally, he digs again. So he's going to take another one of these things. It doesn't matter. He just takes one of these things just because it's a different colour. So there we go, uh, that's triggered into the game. Let me just pack away these cards and let's see what my score is. And also what Hastings is and see how we compare. So let me just arrange the cards. The starting cards are gonna be here. They're the point scoring cards. Uh, that is my starting card, it needs to go back in the bag. Okay, so. In the bag goes the starting thing. So that goes in here, along with red stuff. So this is gonna be the bag we use for purely mode two stuff. The reason why it goes all in one bag is just because it's easier with a raccoon, you'd have grabbed um, a different well, fish of your choice, basically, it was left in the thing. Hastings card can go away. This can all go away too. And uh, you don't need to see me packing away, so let's crack on with the scoring. So let's see how I can uh, make note of the scoring best. Let's start off with how many cards uh, gave me how many points. As you can see, I've got loads of cards here with these um, wheels on it. One, two, one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine gives me 35 points. 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. Um, now we have some negative points, 44. Um, we lose six because there are two of these which I hadn't done. So that's down to 38. That's 32 points because I've got to take off that as well. And I'll just double check uh, the remainder of the remainder of the score and see what Hastings got. Oh, I know, I haven't done my massive multiplier. So I had 35, 40, 44, minus 12, that's 32. Now let's do the tracks. It's 32, 36, that would be 56, and that would be uh, 72. Okay. So 72 is my score. Let's see what Hastings managed to get. So uh, we're gonna count the cards here, 72. So he's got three cards. So that would be six points. So 72, six points there. Uh, some number of things here. So that's three per tile. Um, um, so that's six. He's gonna get, uh, I think it was here. 32, so that's six, uh, six again, 12, 16, 17, 18. Um, then three points for each of 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Um, he gains fish based on this. 27, so he gains two of the same for three. So that becomes three points because it's three of these. That's 30 points. That doesn't give him anything. So that's 30 points. And then what else is there? He's still got some uncovered tiles. So that's 30 minus the six. So that's 24. So, hmm. And... Ah, okay, so it's 24 to 72. I think that's everything counted. Um, but yeah. So 24, 72, that is Boats and Banners Mode 2. So what's my thoughts on this one? Well, it's the least favourite of the four modes. I do find that the interaction between having to go on the banjo space and to deal with Playing the banjo, it's a fantastic idea thematically and it really nice uh, homage in that respect. But um, the fact that you don't need to get fish, the fact that it just doesn't have anything that really, it's nice to know there's only a limited market to go for, but it really doesn't have anything that really bites out. And you'll have to wait until you see the other modes because you're going to be seeing three at some point um, next as well. But this is definitely... You'll probably see that next week, uh, the, the solo playthrough on mode three. Three is a good one. Three is so far, I'd say probably my favorite, um, comparing it just to the first two, um, without spoiling it for obviously the fourth one. So I do really like that one a lot. I think it's got a lot going for it. Um, a bit more interaction, a bit more fun, um, has a die roll for that you roll as well, but it's not about luck. Um, it's just a nice, fun thing to do. And no, I haven't played the solo mode for, um, this is my first time playing it against Hastings for mode two. So for mode three, it'll be the same for me as well. Interesting to see how that plays out. Um, but it's no, it's very interesting. You're going to have these bandits and sheriffs and you're trying to deal with certain things. So yeah, definitely a lot of fun. And um, you know, I think I have played mode four actually. No, I've played all of them. So yeah, it's interesting to see happen. Oh, I won't spoil about durations yet. I think the duration on this one is about the same, definitely about the same as the other two, uh, the other ones, but I just feel that I think other people have been in agreement. It's, it just hasn't had the same um, grab for some reason. It's moving this boat. I don't know. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just this one hasn't, uh, hasn't done it, but there's nothing wrong about it. And the fact that you do have other modes is great. The fact that you can you know, exhaust yourself in one kind of mode isn't a problem either. I just feel that for some reason, more things happen in the other modes, a bit more fun. App mode is something that uh, everyone sort of starts off with and maybe 
you might have some nostalgia for it. It might be the case that you just feel, oh no, it's, you know, why play the basic one? It's not necessarily basic. It's nice to still have that competing resource. And that's why I think it still draws people because you are really looking to see, you know, are they actually spending those apples and they're just doing that fun kind of way because they're trying to deal with you. So, um, yeah, it is what it is, but I don't know if you kind of picked up on the fact that, you know, you could definitely go for fish and it's fun to do that. Depends if you like fishing, of course, that's another factor. But, um, this is the first time I played it and I thought, hmm, no, I don't actually have to go for a fish. Um, there are enough hook cards that came up. Maybe it's about distribution. So let's just see if any hooks, here. here's another hook symbol. So I could have fished then, I could have fished here as well. So if these cards have come up in a different place, I definitely had these fish last time and playing in a two player, we both did actually go for fish. So it might be the case that against Hastings is a different <laughs> kettle of fish. It's a whole other matter. But I just feel that uh, it isn't something that is essential and that's fine in the game. It's just, um, maybe that's why it's, it's less of a draw and maybe making a game that has something that I don't know, feels like it's special and you're trying to deal with that, deal with it is uh, something you want to consider. But um, no, uh, obviously, recorded wait for this one. But if you liked it, uh, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please consider hitting the subscribe button as well. You can always hit the, the bell notification uh, additionally to see when the new video is uploaded. It's usually once a week at least. And finally, if you have any comments, please stick them in the YouTube comments box. As you'll see, I do reply pretty quickly. Um, aside from that, there are some other videos coming. Quicks is gonna be on the horizon, literally, uh, any day now, as well as Wizard. I and mean, it's gonna be Wizard Jubilee Edition as well, what we're doing a video for. And a few others, Circus Maximus is coming. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and I look forward to bringing you some more soon. Videos uploaded typically in the evening in the UK. And uh, yeah, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.